Hello, good evening, everybody around the world, especially here in Las Vegas. This is your open forum radio show. I have my co-host for tonight. We don't have a guest because we really plan it. Because we want to have a roundtable discussion of what's going on right now here in Vegas about our election for our president of the United States in the next four more years. I just want to start up that I did vote. So there it is. And I had my hat. So I guess you know who I voted for. I don't have to tell you. I don't have to. Here's my shirt. Can you see my shirt? Ah! <laughs> you don't have okay. that shirt. I want that shirt. <laughs> okay. I want to introduce to you my co-host, Miss Dolly. Please wave to the audience, Dolly. Hi. And I have Mitch Hi. Lozada. Mitch. Hi. And I have, uh, where's Vicky? Vicky, where are you? You can't find me? I can't find you. Uh-oh. Oh, this there is you go. Good. Hi, Hello. Hello. And then oh. Miss Charlotte Evans, please. Hello, everybody. Hi, Charlotte. Did you guys vote um, yesterday or the past yes. week? You did? Okay. Well, this is our open forum. It is broadcasted every Monday from 6 to 7 in the evening at PHLB Radio, the number one radio station here and around the world. There's so things that's going on and uh, you know but this is the most important thing tonight because we really have to have a round table discussion so I will start with you Dolly what is bugging you or what are you happy about today well uh, first of all um, I wish everybody a happy election week. tomorrow's election and I've been telling everyone I've been so stressed because you know, we've been campaigning for President Trump for a long time. In fact, right now, I'm trying to reach uh, anybody from the Trump team in D.C., see if they could watch us on uh, PHLB radio. And I hope oh. one of them would call us and join us. That's what I'm doing. Have everybody <laughs> say okay, go ahead. Go ahead, Mitch. Say something to our listeners. Yeah, so this weekend here in Las Vegas, I was a part of the Aliante flag waving and everything that was on Saturday. And then Sunday, there was a 300 car plus motorcade um, going around the freeway. So I got to be a part of that and I recorded it on my channel. So um, it's really great that, you know, in the last weekend before elections, people were patriots and out showing their love for the president and for this election. So um, we'll see how this election goes. And then we'll just keep on praying that you know, um, God willing, our president gets reelected and no major civil unrest will happen. So, yeah. Yes, what's we've been what's that in, sorry, what's Go that on. in your neck? Oh, yeah. So I don't have a Trump hat, but what I have <laughs> is a Trump lay that I made myself. So I make oh. lays, ribbon lays. Um, <laughs> so um, usually I do it for graduation, but hopefully this is a um, preemptive, hopefully not a good, good sign of uh, Trump's re-election, so. <laughs> yes, yes. Go ahead, I was Vicky. just going to say, a lot of, I noticed, a lot of people are braver now to call a Trump victory. Because before, in 2016, everybody was quiet. But now I noticed in Facebook, oh, I'm calling it. It's going to be Trump. Even the, like, George uh, Chainas, you know, you know him, Charlotte. So him and uh, Woodrow Johnson and all the others, uh, Courtney Holland, um, they're they're very brave and bold to say that it's, they're calling it. It's going to be a Trump victory, uh, different from 2016 when everybody expected really that because of the polls it was Hillary, and people were quiet. It, we were all surprised. I know other people were short in 2016, but like I said, it's different now. People are a little braver and bolder, yes. and. Uh, greedy because they want Trump to win the popular vote and the electoral, electoral vote. So it, it's really fun. And before anything else, I just wanted to show you my hat. Ooh, ooh. Ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Yeah. Go right. ahead, Charlotte, please. I just wanted to say, I, I think up, up until about a week and a half ago, I had huge butterflies in my stomach, uh, anxiety that was crazy. I still have butterflies in my stomach, but I feel that there's something amazing happening in this country. 
And there's a, a saying ever since we were children, it's um, don't underestimate the horse sense of the American people. And to have horse sense, first off, people even need to be able to have access to information. And the way the general public has been actively sabotaged by big tech, actively sabotaged by most of the media, and as a lifelong journalist, in, in this, in this uh, forum, I love being with you guys because we're commentators and we're offering our opinion. But I've been in what is supposed to be unbiased media before, and my, my perception of how the American media has handled this is going to go down in history as one of the biggest disgraces ever. Yes, exactly. And I am grateful that I think people across this country quietly are putting their foot down like a horse does and saying, no more. Exactly. I love it. Yes. No yeah. More. No, no more. No. And you know, yes. the more I think about it, the more I look at the situation right now, I've been telling my daughter, I said, we are Americans and we are so used to our freedom. We are not used to people telling us what to do. We are not used to people telling us to remove that and remove this because it offends me in particular. One person can, go, can just voice out now and say, hey, that offends me. Who the heck are you? to be against our constitution. You know, we all believe in our constitution and we have been so scared before, you know, to say something, especially Filipinos. We are so, we were brought up, you know, in a sense that you just don't say anything, you just be quiet. If there's something that you are against with, just keep it to yourself, and then, you know, you know to, avoid, to avoid problem, to avoid, uh, you know, controversy, right? Controversy. Yeah. And that's how we were, but not anymore. Because this thing has been done so bad, it's too much. It really attacks your values and principles. You know, life. today I was listening to um, Fox News and Juan Williams was speaking. And I was looking at it. Go away, Juan Williams. Come on. You know, he's such a, he's such a Democrat. He was saying, oh, we just want to we just want to bring back class at the White House. Oh. Are you kidding me? Class. Right now, a lot of these commentators who've been so comfortable acting as though it's a Joe Biden thing, of course, they're still trying to do that, and it's not working, and you can see it, and these people's heads are going to explode tomorrow. I don't think we're going to have a definitive answer tomorrow, but we'll have an idea of what a blow-up this is in favor of President Trump. Exactly. And, uh, and a lot of journalists are going to go insane. And they were yeah. Exactly. They were yeah. always thinking that... Um, uh, it's a dirty press. Uh, that's what Trump calls them, right? Uh, very corrupt and everything. But actually now, with the Hunter Biden thing, that really made me... Convinced. It proves it. Yeah, Yeah, it proves it. You know why? Because with Trump, even this Mary Trump, his niece, uh, is it niece who, who wrote something about him, the book? Everybody was covering it. But now yes. that... Hunter yeah. Biden, you know, the press is like, you know, they're like vicious dogs. When they smell something, when they smell blood, they're going to be all over it. But no one, no one. No but one they, wants to touch they, Hunter Biden. They, and yes. nobody, there's other, other politicians, kids, like Nancy Pelosi's son, Paul Pelosi oh, Jr. No. He yeah. had some sweet deals that nobody's investigating. I yeah. think, personally, I suspect the FBI is investigating it just like they're investigating Hunter, but you don't hear about it in the media. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah. that's that's really. Trata, you, you are a journalist. Do you think these people can be rightfully called journalists? I don't think so. You know, I, I studied high school journalism since I was 13. I've always wanted to be in journalism or to be a journalist, and we we learn that there are very important canons of journalism. There's seven of them. One of them is impartiality, truthfulness, okay, being fair. We don't see that anymore in, in, in this uh, media that we have. That's why they are called lamestream media. Mm -hmm. it's it used to be, journalism used to be a calling, and just like you said, there were, there were certain tenets of that calling that were expected and demanded of of um, reporters, and if you didn't exhibit that sort of impartiality, you'd get fired back in the day. It's, it's completely different now, and I think another thing that might come up, my predict, prediction is, four years from now, somebody's going to get the nerve to start analyzing where some of these reporters, even the ones for the largest mainstream media, where it's a given, of course, they make $8 million a year, 
but they're getting other investments from other sources is my very strong suspicion. I think they're being rewarded in ways that nobody's looking into. And exactly. I think that is a future Pulitzer Prize story. Well, um, you know, the Pulitzer Prize, for example, before it is a very, very important, uh, the Pulitzer Prize. Now, <laughs> they will not, it's a joke. It's you a know? joke. It's a joke now. Even it's the Nobel Prize, Nobel Prize is such, oh my goodness, in order to, to be a recipient of the Nobel Peace Prize or somebody. Mm -hmm. But ever since Obama and Gore, Gore also was awarded, right? Mm -hmm. Because of the global war. war. Well, they thought it was, it was great when he was awarded it. They couldn't wow. stop talking about it when it was Al Gore getting the Peace Prize or Obama getting the Peace Prize. The, the press was all about it. Our current president has been nominated twice. <laughs> Correct. Three times already. He did. The la last week was the third time. I don't know who did Three it. times. Third time. Yeah, three times. And and nobody mm -hmm. talked about it. What he did in Israel and UA, United Arab Emirates, what he did there is such a, uh, it's gigantic. It's it's grand. It's big. But you didn't hear that from the uh, mm -hmm. mainstream media. You didn't. There's nothing. It's very sad that they're doing that to President Trump and the family. Can you imagine <clears throat> married to a very beautiful woman? Oh, if it was somebody else, could it be a cover of Vogue, cover of just all these magazines? But Melania Tr uh, Trump? Oh, yeah. They, they didn't do that. Oh. Yeah, that's, I think a lot of people are now <laughs> getting to the point where they're so disgusted with how Melania Trump has been treated. Even people who didn't... Um, really admire her four years ago, now look at her as somebody who's carried herself as a hardworking first lady with almost almost no praise, almost no recognition from any magazine. And I think American yeah. people love her even more now. Yeah. What can you say about Chelsea Handler? Oh my gosh. <laughs> uh, say something about it since you're laughing. You know what? I, I, I'd like to hear what Mitch Lozado has to say about this as a guy. But I think Jason Whitlock was spot on when he said that Chelsea Handler is being a racist by telling her ex-boyfriend who he can vote yes. for. Yes, that's right. You are black. You have to vote for her. That's exactly. I heard that today. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it, it goes to show, like, it's the Biden crowd, right? It, Biden already said it, you know, if you don't vote for me, you ain't black. And then... Um, for Chelsea Hamlet to say the same thing, you know, it just echoes the same mentality that you have to fall lockstep with the minorities. And so, you know, and, and I'm glad that there is so many people waking up to that. Like, um, like I said to you guys in the chat, like for the Latinos, like when Biden played the Despacito, like the Latinos are waking up to that too. Like you can't just play a song and expect us for your vote, you know? And again, it's so amazing. Like, again, I work, like traveling back from LA to Las Vegas, I'm being a part of so many rallies. It's this is this is historic, right? The, no other president has had this level of enthusiasm, right? Exactly. Like motorcades across the country, right? We have in liberal California people raising up Hollywood type signs of Trump, you know, in multiple locations, you know, and Biden doesn't, Biden doesn't have that, you know, and this is so historic that a, lo a lot of people are just waking up. And I think a lot of people are fully engaged this election season, you know, I think um, Tita Josie was talking about it. Sometimes elections were like, who, whoever wins, right? But I think people are waking yeah. up this time and like, hey, we need to fight yes. for America this time. This is like, we're exactly. fed up. Like, we can't just follow the establishment anymore. Like we have to be exactly. for this election now. And so I'm really glad Americans, all types of Americans, um, all walks of life is waking up for this election. Josie, um, and I do can hope, we say- I do hope they all come up tomorrow and just vote. Uh, Josie, just vote. Uh, since yes. uh, tomorrow's election and, and we are supporting our president, uh, can each and each of us say something why we are supporting him and why we are not supporting the the uh, enemy camp can we okay that's yes good. who wants to start uh, i'll start start and give well, us well actually okay. victoria we haven't seen victoria in a while <laughs> yeah okay Go ahead, victoria. okay yeah i posted in uh, my facebook page i changed my uh profile picture because i'm a lawyer <laughs> this is my experience 
I told them, um, in choosing a president, choosing a president is like choosing a lawyer. Your lawyer is supposed to uh, defend you, okay? Fight for you and everything. So you don't choose a lawyer who's nice to you or who seems nice. No, you choose a lawyer who will deliver, a lawyer who will fight for you. And who has delivered? You know the answer. So that's my opinion. But, but, uh, uh, what I'm saying is tomorrow you guys are going to vote. Your vote is important. But what's more important, because uh, more than 84 million votes have been cast already, what is important is your prayer, guarding the vote. Uh, it, it's a fight, not of people, okay, but of evil spirits and intents. I believe that. If it were just people, we can all fight. But this time, you can't fight that, that kind of a spirit. So all you need is really prayer. So everybody tonight, you voted already, pray. Pray that your vote is counted and pray for a clean and honest election. Amen to that. Yes. Go ahead, Dali. Well, you know, um, I have always said this, uh, even during the 2016 election, it's no longer be a fight between the Republican and the Democrat. And this is a spiritual battle. Yeah. Like I already said, we are fighting not against uh, Biden, but against principalities and powers and high places. Now, I, I truly believe that. And uh, I kept telling my, my family that um, we are really like the guest that was invited by uh, Charlotte uh, a while back, um, we are living in the end times. And this is the time that we really have to really be careful who, who, who choose our leaders. And why I am supporting President Trump is because, you know, I'm a minister and not only that, and I, I am a believer. I honestly believe that this man has become a, a believer. And I honestly believe that to me, people, sometimes they would laugh at me because he's God sent. Look at all the what we have gone through. The eight years that Obama Biden did at the White House, what? Nothing. The Muslim Brotherhood was in and out, and they even closed the White House for a long time. You remember that? Remember, Josie, that they closed yes. the White House, the tourists cannot even go there, and yet yes. they found out that every day Muslim Brotherhood was in and out, in and out, almost like, you know, um, 500 of them. Wow, that's that's a lot. Well, and that's not the only thing why I'm supporting President Trump. You know, um, I, I believe in his agenda. And of course, uh, being a believer, I, um, I'm i against, um, I'm pro-life. And I'm pretty much against um, um, abortion. And there's just so many things that has happened. When President Trump went into office, there were almost 50 million people who were in welfare and food stamps. So when he, for three, for three years, three and a half years, it went down. 20 millions, okay, down. So that's a lot. That's about 40%. And jobs, you know, were just, it, it's just all over. And, and our country is more pro prosperous economically, right? Okay, yes. I take the floor to... Um, Someone else. Yes. yes. Go ahead, Mitch. So my my situation is a little different because back in 2016, again, I wasn't politically active, right? I was even laughing at both candidates, you know. I was laughing when people would destroy the uh, President um, Trump star Hall of Fame on Hollywood Boulevard, you know. I was one of those people that, like, didn't really care. But I think what changed my mind was the, the mainstream media. Like... I started to realize everything, like they put him such in a negative light that everything that he did was negative, you know? And like no person, they didn't acknowledge anything good, you know? It's so slanted, but it made me realize, okay, this can't be true. So I had to look it up myself. And so really kind of like the mainstream media, YouTube, all of this stuff changed my mind. And obviously we have seen four years of him, eight, doing a good job you know um could he do better of course every any person can right but he is de delivering what he's saying like my, my me myself i'm i'm pro-life too and so he's the first president who spoke at the march for life you know and so 
it's just one thing after another. And I guess main for me, again, it's always been about the mainstream media covering um, for against him. You know? And so for me, it's, it's just always been, um, Trump has always been the better candidate. And then Biden, Biden like, can't like, even say words. What, what did he say this past time? True, but I'm not here. He can't even what? say words. Um, and so it, for me, it's a clear thing. And obviously, I'm with everyone. This is for the American people. This is the American dream. This is like he is fighting for the American people. Maybe he didn't. I don't know if he was sold um, in 2016 that he was going to be president. Maybe he did it on a troll. I don't know. But I think by being in office, he, he realized how corrupt the government was. And now he knows the American people's behind him and he is fighting for the American people. And I believe in that 100%. And so many patriots do. Like, uh, like I said, no one is doing 100 motorcades across the nation for Biden. Like this, we are, we are fighting for our nation. And I believe Trump is fighting with us. So, yeah. Before Charlotte, let me say, I think, I also think 2016, I saw the hand of God. You know why? Because we were already losing everywhere, you know, whatever they do. And out of 17 or 21 candidates for um, to be the presidential nominee for the Republican, how come they ended up with Trump? So it's really the hand of God. It's and first, exactly, first time you run for office and the, yes. to be a president. And, and he was and unusual. And he, all the exactly. people, he was running against, they were all experts. Mitt Romney, I don't know the others, I don't remember, but yeah, you know, they're all good. Yeah. Okay, okay, let, me, let, me just say, let me just say something. Uh, Johan, I have a lot of comments. Wow. Uh, they said that, uh, is that true? Oh. That they, they cannot, oh, they cannot oh. watch us. They said we are censored. So it's not true. Oh, okay. Oh, I see. Okay, Charlotte, go ahead. It's your turn. I would pretty much echo what everybody, every one of my fellow panelists has said. And I believe that this is a divine inspired um, election. And as somebody who's been a journalist, worked for major network affiliates for 25 years, that's a strange thing to say on its face. But in this um, forum, we talk about how we personally feel and our personal opinions. This cat's very noisy, so I'm going to get, put her down. No, he's okay. But, but I, be, I believe that our Constitution was divine inspired. I think that Jesus Christ, in my opinion, was the only perfect human on this planet. So our founding fathers, they were human beings with foibles, especially um, sins that were uh, typical in that day and age. So they're not, they weren't perfect people. But that doesn't mean that the Constitution and the Declaration of Independence weren't inspired by, I believe, our Heavenly Father. And I also believe this year, things have come together. Uh, two weeks ago, you guys wanted me to kind of answer something. You know I like visual aids. I'll do this fast. But <laughs> okay. do, I this, do I think this is a... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. quite possibly. I think that there are signs around us all the time. Now, there's signs that are more practical that I agree with. This one says, cities with riots are mostly run by Democrats. Yes. That is absolutely true. Yes. As a fact of the matter, it's true. And it also speaks to what the Democrat policies want to do to our country versus what conservative policies would do. And as a lifelong Democrat, I'm still registered Democrat, I voted Republican down the line because I believe we are in a fight between good and evil. I do not think socialism yeah, exactly. is the answer. I think socialism would kill our country. And I, here's my final visual aid. It says, you guys have probably seen this before. It says, in reality, they're not after you. It says, in reality, they're not after me. They're after you. I'm just in the way. So this is President Trump. And he, he is actually, he is our last hope sticking up for us. Because big tech isn't sticking up for us. The press is not sticking up for us. The deep state would, oh my goodness. It, uh, uh. So yes, I, I, I believe this. And I believe that, um, that the, the American people of all colors, and this is so exciting too. I think the people of all colors are feeling more empowered than they ever have. And they really are going with their gut in terms of good and evil. And I think that black brown and white people, but especially black and brown people who maybe in the past didn't want to vote as much, I think they're going to want to vote because I think they also feel 
that our, our country, our future, our, our children's future, and our grandchildren's future all hangs on this election. Not only this, but not only us. I'm sorry, uh, not only us, but the whole world. The world, no, yes. All waiting. The Iraq, Iraq, Turkey, Russia, China, all of them are waiting. So mm -hmm. they want to, you know. Well, I think we've inspired a lot of people around the world, too, because yeah. folks throughout Europe, they've been making fun of our president because it's the chic thing to do. And Europeans are, are prone to that sort of uh, way of, of, of communicating. However, there's an underlying current where I think the world is saying, wow, the American people have the tiger by the tail and, and the American people have balls. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the last the, the eight years that. Uh, Obama and Biden were at the White House. You cannot even say Merry Christmas. And I remember that. Because mm. why? Because in Christmas, the word Christ is there. You cannot say that. You have Christ, to Christ, Christ. I had, I had a girlfriend <laughs> who was working in a department store. She was almost fired because she was greeting her, her customers, Merry Christmas. This was a Filipino woman. Merry Christmas instead of Happy Holiday. And the supervisor says, if you say Merry Christmas again, next time we hear you say Merry Christmas, you're going to be fired. Can you imagine that? Yeah. Happy Holiday is fine, but I always say Merry and, Christmas first. And you have your First Amendment. So that's what's crazy. You have First Amendment, freedom of speech, freedom of religion. But how come you can't even say Merry Christmas? God bless you. Exactly. They want and they, they want to disarm Americans, the Second Amendment. Oh yeah. Right to bear arms. Why do they want the Americans to legally carry firearms? Yes. You know why the Democrats want to do that? Because they want to arm the criminals. Who's gonna who is gonna do that? Who's gonna carry the, who's gonna bear arms? But the criminals, not not the leg legitimate people who can carry guns. And, and the, the leftists, they want to silence all of us. They want us to, to shut up. I know that Tucker Carlson says that, but that's the truth. They want us to be um, council cultured, feared into keeping our mouths shut. That's, that is really sad. You know, um, that, um, e even the, um, the young people now are, are even afraid in school. I have grandchildren who are at the university. You know, Grandma, we cannot even say that we are supporting Trump, especially in, in 2016. This happened in 2016 and still and carried on. They're going to beat you up we in school. Exactly. Yeah, go ahead, Dolly. They're going to beat you up in school. Yeah. No, no, go ahead. My, my, my has has <laughs> Josie given her definitive reasons for voting for Trump? No, I haven't because I love listening to all of you. And I love all of you. You know, the more you I love you too, Josie. Thank you. I Thank am you. so proud of this program. I'm <laughs> truly is, truly is. Not just you because all for Trump, but but listening to all of you, I really I really made a good choice, you know, and saying I will get Dolly, I will get Charlotte, I will get uh, Thank Vicky. you. Because it's amazing. I can just thank sit you, Josie. and watch. Thank really. You. I, I thank, really thank you, Josie. Thank, yeah. you. thank you. Thank you the so same, much. The same, and Mitch. Oh, my God, Mitch. Welcome to yeah. our show. <laughs> He's our baby. Yeah, <laughs> stay with us. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, you the, thing, the thing that happened is this. Like I have mentioned a while ago, in my past life here in America, I only started <laughs> voting like maybe five, six years ago, to be honest with all of you. I was never concerned about who is running the country, who will they vote. I don't even know what's the procedure in voting because I never voted. But this past few years, starting with Trump, I've become very, very much involved. And as you know, I am a past district governor of the Lions Clubs International. And being with the Lions Club, we cannot be politically involved at all. We have to be careful. I think, but now slowly, the mm -hmm. other uh, Lions that I see that have category also with the Lions family is coming out and voicing out what they think about it. The thing that I notice is this. Everything that happened, mm -hmm. I connect it to the issue. Mm -hmm. You know, just like this latest one that I have noticed is that 
there was a rumor about Hunter being a pedophile. These are rumors and these are from the media. So I don't know if it's factual or not. I don't know. But I'm just sharing how I feel and how my mind operates now. <laughs> All of a sudden, they went ahead and kind of made some comments about the bill about a child who is nine years old, who is now legally can have sexual activities with an adult. In California. In California, right. But you know, that's always the start. Other states will follow through on that one. There's probably their pilot state because they know <laughs> it's going to be approved because of that stupid news. Don California or Nevada. Yeah. But anyways, and then all of a sudden, you see that the, the thing about Hunter was not out yet. And then after the thing happened, the case of Hunter being out now about the laptop, about seeing her, his niece or whoever who is related that are having pictures of their tops open and whatnot. And then I kind of joined that together and kind of relate that. They are very wise. They are doing this because they are probably anticipating something could happen. So now if that comes in and this bill is okay, they're kind of covered. You see what I'm, how dirty their minds are? And that is where I'm putting my mind. They're getting ready for everything that they needed in their case. Hey, Josie, I have another suggestion. Since uh, we are having well, a let really... Me, let, me, let, let, let me finish, Dali. Let me finish, Dali. <laughs> no okay, interruptions. So, yeah. No, I'm not. That is one part of my mind working. The way oh, the okay. Democrats is manipulating us. They are very smart. They know there might be a case. Hey, let's put something here to protect us. It's already there. It's, you know, well, you know, you nine years old can make sex or whatever. You see what I'm saying? How dirty it is. And the thing is, with Trump, I've seen a lot of interviews done with him. And almost all of the interviewers are asking him, what will you do if you run as president? You know what I'm saying? It's always like he was prepared to be in that position. And remember, what is that prophecy that they said, it's not a politician that will change America. It is a businessman. And here is Trump in our government right now. My God, from the very start of his term, all he had was BS, you know? How can you live? I admire that man. You know, I pray for him that the next morning he will not have a heart attack because then yeah. the next morning he probably is thinking, what now? What is the topic now that my mind has to be involved and fight for it? It's really- he, he is so alone. Yes, He's he so is alone. So alone. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and probably he could have done more if his hands were not tied like that because yeah. um like in the philippines you can't you can't sue the president and do all yeah. these things because it takes his mind away from what you elected him for exactly you, you know to take care of the country but now they're trying to remove him his focus instead of in the country to all these cases everybody punching at him hitting him yeah and that's yeah. right yeah four yeah. years of that well, I, he got my vote, baby. He got it. He got my vote. Perfect. And I, I think all of this, I, I mean, you got to be careful still what to say because none of us wants to end up in a FEMA camp one day. Exactly. But the FBI, the crookedness of the FBI has been just basically exposed on so many levels. Think about how James Comey freaked out before the, Hill the election in yeah. 2016. I remember that. And to cover his own ass... He released the information about her emails. Exactly. Okay, fast forward to what happened now. They impeach our president, but don't bother to mention that there was a current, ongoing investigation of the very thing the president was being accused of having an improper phone conversation about. There was exactly. an actual investigation into money laundering involving Hunter Biden, and the FBI knew and that. And the thing about it. And, and so on. So, I mean, that is just, talk about deep state. They, they proved it. We, we know. Exactly. exactly. But then, you know, you have to thank uh, James Comey in 2016 because a few days before the election, he, he released something negative about Hillary. And that, I believe, changed everything. So, well, I, yeah. And what, that's kind of what I was meant referring to. He released that to save his own butt. So he thought. Yeah. He, he thought. He was the one person. 
at the top of the FBI that knew about these emails, and he had already pretty much exonerated her falsely. So to yeah. say to himself, he said, oh, yeah, by the way, and he threw that out there. But Comey, in my opinion, belongs in prison. Yeah. You know, you know the, reason, the reason why uh, President, they wanted President Trump to be out of office because um, he made the remark, I'm talking about President Trump, that the, the last four years, the second term, is when he's going to have everybody pay for their sins, meaning those who have done uh, so much, you know, wrong in the government, they're, 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 they're going to find it. They're going to find it. What, what I was trying to suggest earlier, Josie, was this. Now, since we know why we are supporting uh, President Trump, how about telling our audience, our, our viewers or listeners, um, how we become where we are now? For example, maybe I was a Democrat before. And now you're a Republican, like like Charlotte. She's a Democrat, but she's uh, um, voting Republican. I guess um, we have heard why we have come to this state. So, if that is a good issue. Well, what's hap what what's happening right now, Dali, is you know, it, it's a mind opening thing. You know, you you just okay. look at it, and on your own, you can judge. My God, really? Is this how you're gonna solve this? Is this how you're gonna treat a person? You you know what I'm saying? A person watching what's going on and all these uh, 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 young uh, council uh, representatives right now, uh, those Ocasio and uh, the squad, them, right? I mean, yeah. the squad. I mean, they're just there telling us this and calling our president an MF or whatever. I mean, really? how did they become in how our own in our own country? That's mm -hmm. ridiculous. Yeah. That's ridiculous. I just want to say something, though. Excuse me, Mitch. On the on the comments, the, the uh, somebody is saying, "Go, go, Charlotte, go, Charlotte." <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> hey, can I, can I add something else? Unless I don't want to interrupt. Josie, were you done with your thought? Yes. The Congressional Black Caucus, I don't believe, even has one Republican member right now. But I think. By next January, it's going to be filled with some of the best candidates in the country, including John James, including Burgess Owens. I think there are so many African-American candidates right now who are the bomb, who are good, and who are conservative. And I can't wait to see them in Congress. I hope John James okay. made it. Minnesota, right? Or yeah, Minnesota? That's, come on, man. You're not black. <laughs> I hope Jan. Uh, who is that? Janice Owens. Candice. 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 Yeah. I hope she. Oh gosh! Please put her there. Yeah, we need she's her. good. I hope you. Yeah, she's hope still young to run for president now, but she'll undoubtedly run later. She would make a great candidate from what we can oh, tell. Oh yes. John James, West Point graduate, amazing man. I think he'd be a future presidential candidate. There's so many good people getting into politics. Yes. yes, and I will tell Candice I will be the head of her campaign. <laughs> I'll okay. join you. Uh, uh, yes. <laughs> yeah. do, you, do you want to say something about what Dolly was asking? No, I, I was just going to throw in a question as far as maybe, because we talked offline, like how we perceived the elections was going to happen. Like I, I was saying, like, we'll probably see like a soft, re soft results on Tuesday night, but you know, we've been talking about they're probably going to elongate the election or the results because of mail-in. Obviously, the Democrats are probably going to try to cheat that this is illegitimate. There's no way that the nation is wanting to vote for Trump, you know. So I kind of want to pick your brains as far as what, what do we all think what's going to happen this week um, or this month or, you know, so. I was well, looking at people, the number. Wait, wait, wait. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I was looking at the number of... Um, what do you call this? Uh, electoral votes. So California has 55. I think that's the biggest, isn't it? Yeah. Yes. And that's just Texas. So I just heard in the news that the California governor um, approved that they will do the counting or probably after election until 17 days. How long is 17 days? That's more than two weeks. So I was hoping that it'll all be finished by tomorrow. It's like <laughs> Oh, we don't need the California uh, electoral votes anymore because, you know, based on the numbers, hopefully that happens. You never know. You can ask for a miracle because yes. 17 days is too long, really. It's, it's really it long. is. It, can you imagine the, long, the, the, longer it takes, the longer it takes, 
the more chances of Trump losing and the more chances of disorder. So, yes. you know, the, the, the faster one should be the one. So I hope we can call it like... Last one. Yeah, the ne- this week. So you know, Hillary, Hillary already said to, um, to uh, Biden, do not concede. She, she yeah. was saying that her mistake was that she considered that night and it should not happen with, with Biden. But look at like what Mitch is saying, the enthusiasm all over the United States for oh Trump. Yeah. And uh, we just hope that it ends tomorrow and they accept that uh, President Trump uh, wins the, uh, his re-election. Yeah. Let's just pray for that. You're right, um, yeah. Victoria. That's, that's why it's so bad. We need to pray yeah. for We need that prayer that, so bad. That's our only hope, actually. So let me my see. prediction would be similar to Mitch's is that could, this could be drawn out. But my mm-hmm. prayer is that enough Americans quietly go out and ex- exercise their right to vote, that any late tallies would be irrelevant and it's decisive enough that we can move forward as a country. I mean, there will still be lawsuits, but they're easier to dismiss if yeah. the numbers speak for themselves. And mm-hmm. so the American people have the power right now to decide the future of the world in this election. Yes. Oh, yes. yes. Um, and, and that comes with a vote for President Trump. Yes, definitely. Exactly. Definitely. You know, uh, let me just, let, let, Dali, let me just read some of the comments, you know. Uh, uh, well, this is my number one fan, my cousin, Gidget de Guzman Ramos, and Maria Wiltock, my friend, they are all watching. Uh, Joe Devlin say, go, 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 Charlotte. <laughs> Mary Ann says hello, Afi Josie Harrison, and stay healthy, all of you guys. You guys are doing a good job. Hey, okay, go ahead. Jimmy. Okay, so I was gonna say you were talking about love. I was gonna tell you that I love a lot of my Democrat friends. I love them. They're all good. They're intelligent. They're passionate. I love them. It's just that sometimes I think uh, they're very intelligent, just like we all are. But why are they agreeing to this one? Are they hypnotized? For example, I'll ask you. Yes. Do you want higher taxes? What is the answer? (laughs) Do you want (laughs) illegal immigrants? What is the answer? Do you want to slaughter innocent children, babies? What is the answer? So... Uh, all these things, do you want um, no, taxes and uh, immigration? Fair trade. Okay. So I'm thinking, are they hypnotized to say yes? But, but they're so intelligent, and I love them dearly, but I do understand it. I, I, you know, uh, the last uh, three Sundays, uh, go ahead, Mitch, go ahead. So just to answer that, I think I'm going to quote Ronald Reagan. The problem with our liberal friends is not that they're ignorant. It's just they know so much that isn't so. And so they're just basing their, their it's not that they're dumb. They're just going off bad info, right? And so. Yeah. Yeah. And they just follow through. Let's go. Yeah. That's why I was saying hypnotize. Because you just say yes. Okay. At the click of the finger, you're going to say yes. Oh, God. Who wants higher taxes? You're going to pay for it. Who wants free education that you are somehow going to pay for it? So it's all. I I and you it. know, the more we talk about this, you know, uh, Carrie, Carrie is involved with, uh, I think his uh, son or niece or nephew is married to somebody that owns uh, big businesses in the in the Middle East. If I'm Who's not, I cannot remember. Oh, John, John, John Carrie. Carrie. Oh, John Carrie. John Carrie, the biker? Yeah. No, John Carrie. Carrie. The Secretary of State. That's why. Well, he has done. He he rode a bike. But that's what they accused President Trump of doing. That they impeached him for this phone call where they say he was going rogue. Mm -hmm. That's what John Kerry did every day. Exactly. Exactly. You see, and then uh, Hillary, you know, had connections with some of the issues. Can you imagine? They just cover up and, and don't even talk about all the thousands and thousands of cassettes or whatever that they destroyed that's ridiculous that is ridiculous if you're not if you are not if you are innocent present it here here are the tapes you listen but to destroy it why did you destroy it 
Well, because they are covered by the, uh, by the Constitution or the rights of according to the law. You don't have any evidence, so how can you prove? Right? And they have to destroy it because they end up in prison. But I believe, yeah. I believe if, if Trump is reelected, I think what, um, I think it was no, when? Victoria when who was saying, maybe it was Dolly, that the next four years are when we're going to start to see people actually held accountable. Exactly. And I, I can't wait to see exactly. people held accountable for that because they were covering covering their own tracks. Exactly. Where's, where's our uranium, Hillary Clinton? How much money did you get for our uranium? And who's got it now? Who the heck knows? Yeah. And how much did our country get weakened by giving away our uranium or even a portion of it exactly to, to that's Russia. why they, they yeah, don't exactly. want him to win because exactly. after four years he cannot be re-elected anymore therefore he has he doesn't owe anyone anything and he can start prosecuting everybody it's yeah. revenge time that's why oh god so i hope he does he it. Win. Well, I, 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 revenge time sounds as though he's and, and that's how they'll paint it. They'll say that he is somebody who wants to, I just think he wants justice. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly what he's doing. That's exactly. And like I said, you know, these Democrats, they are scared. They are all scared because if Trump will go in there for another four years, that's it. All their skeletons will be all out. It will be all out. And that is why they're scared, really. There's a lot more that we don't know. Can I ask everybody a, a question? On a scale of 1 to 10, 10 being the most, 1 being the least, how much do you like Kamala Harris? Oh my <laughs> Zero. God. Zero for Dolly? Zero. Zero. I haven't Zero. seen such a sarcastic person in my life. A person who is in such a, in an interview and look at the person speaking and, and she's smiling. Swearing. What is she smiling about? Oh, and her, and her cackling, her cackling is terrible. Oh, she sounds like my, a witch. Oh and the God. funny thing is, Tucker Carlson, before we went on the show tonight, was making fun of her talking with a um, a deep Georgia accent. Yeah. And she grew up, she grew up in Montreal. Oh so my what is she, God. such a chameleon phony. <laughs> Just unbelievable, unbelievable. So yeah, let's I give her a zero. Yes, that Biden who <laughs> selected uh, Kamala Harris. It was somebody else. I just want to share this with you briefly. I know we're coming to, uh, we have nine minutes. Uh, the last three God. Sundays, I've been uh, watching uh, different Christian network. Before, church churches are so uh, distant or afraid to even speak something about politics in the pulpit. Mind you, the last three weeks, especially last Sunday, all the, all the, Christian network stations, they were all praying for President Trump. They were all telling their people, vote, go out and vote. The young people and those who have not voted before, they're all out and registered to vote. And last time, there were only like, um, they say it's about 90% evangelicals, and now it's only 80%. I think there's more evangelicals now than Should before. be. Should be, yeah. yeah. Because not all the evangelicals. Uh, came out last time, but uh, they were expecting them to do so. Hopefully now they will. Oh, I hope so. I really yep. hope so. You know. Oh, did you listen to uh, PHLV, um, the gentleman who founded TOFA? By the way, uh, Josie. Oh, congratulations, congratulations, Josie. Congratulations, Thank you. Thank Josie, you. for being chosen one of the uh, outstanding. Thank you. That, yeah, that's right. That, that is that is. Yeah, we. Yeah, that is Elton. Elton. Dugan. Oh yes, uh, he him. had. Uh, there was. Uh, it was uh, Mayor Falcone of uh, Brunswick, yes. Ohio, and oh, your friend, Lloyd <laughs> no, She was my neighbor in the Philippines. Oh my goodness, how much she praised the the administration of Obama and Biden. And I'm glad that uh, Ron uh, Falcone, you know, did uh, a good job. It was a debate. Yes. It was a debate between the two um, candidates for the two, about the yeah. two candidates. So that was pretty good. Uh, the thing, the thing about the TOFA, it was such a good presentation. All the messages and what have you is beautiful until Loida came in because she did a campaign for Biden. Oh my God! Oh, oh, oh you know what? Oh, 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 she did that. She oh did my. that four years ago in uh, one event of Dr. Yeah, heritage. Our heritage. Heritage. Yeah, Heritage. Oh, yeah. oh my God. Yeah. People walked out. 
Because this oh one is the last kind of thing she started campaigning for Hillary. People walk out. Yeah. That's Loida Nicholas Lewis. Yes. Yeah, I was so proud listening to all this, uh, you know, honoring these awardees, you know, their speech and everything, you know. And then here comes Loida, you know. <laughs> oh, my God. Campaigning about Biden. I said, oh, my God, here we go. Yeah. But anyways, anyways, we have, we have, seven, to, we have seven, seven minutes. minutes. Okay. Uh, one, two, three, how many? Uh, four, five, six. <laughs> Why don't we have one minute each? Uninterrupted. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, uninterrupted. Dali, say whatever you want to say to the people about this election, how important it is mm -hmm. to vote. Yeah, you heard it, ladies and gentlemen, our friends, viewers of uh, PHLV Open Forum. This is a very crucial election. In fact, they say this is the most important election in, in, in the modern history of the United States. It is very important. I know it's rather late now to register, but please, those of you who can vote, practice your, your uh, civic duty as an American citizen. It is very important. And especially I'm talking to a lot of Filipino Americans, a lot of Filipino Americans out there I know are Democrats. Why are you Democrats? Our conservative values align with the principle of the Republican Party. Our conservative values align with, with the tenets beliefs of our president, President Trump. Please go out and vote. This is very important. Most important also is that the, the uh, importance of this is the uh, future of our children, our children's children's children. We don't want America to be a communist country in the future. You know, they don't understand what, what, what a socialist republic is. Socialism is okay, you have money, free this, free that, oh, free, free everything. But later on, you, you will run out of money. What's going to happen to our children's children's children? So think of that. And most of all, it is uh, it aligns with our uh, uh, biblical principles. Thank you. Thank you so much. Both for ahead, President Trump. Um, so I think we all know where our votes should go. And I think we should be all smart and pray for it and everything. But I think my lasting note is that whatever the results may be, I think we need to become the better people. If we are the Christians and Catholics that need to be here, I think we need to reconcile. A lot of people have deleted me off my friends because of my beliefs, right? I think we need to be the, the bigger people and like, obviously give an olive branch and like, hey, I want to reconcile. I think this, I think we should build this next four years of reconciliation, uh, of forgiveness and mercy and compassion because they say that President Trump is divisive. It's the mainstream media that's making him divisive and everything. I think we need to show that we as Trump supporters, as, as conservatives, as Christians, as as whatever, I think we need to become the better people and reach out and this and be merciful. Like, hey, I know you and I know you disagree with me, but I still want to be your friend. I still want to be Americans. We're all Americans on this time. And so I think we should take the part and be leaders and, and stand up for patriotism and just really become good citizens despite our differences. So I think that's the best thing that we should go for in the next four years. Thank you, Mitch. Go ahead, Vicky. I was going to say that um, those of you who have voted and those who are going to vote tomorrow, that means that the die is cast. Okay? Mm -hmm. It's out there. You can't control it anymore. And the only person, entity, thing that can control it really is God. Okay? There's a saying that man proposes and God disposes. Okay. <laughs> all we can do is really, let's say, propose President Trump. And all the other side can do is propose Joe Biden. Okay, so what the thing that we now have to do is just ask, you know, just say, Lord, whatever is your will, it will be done in heaven and on earth. We know that. That's the prayer in the Bible, the Lord's Prayer. We have no other weapon except use the Lord's protection. So please, after voting, pray, because it is out of our control. It's too big, you know? So we can only do the little things, the macro things, what about the micro things, like voting. But what about the counting and all the 50 states? It's up to God's hands. So just, let's just pray for it. 
I love all of you. Thank you, Vicky. Go ahead, Charlotte. I think every one of my fellow panelists, I love you guys because what Mitch was saying about no matter what happens, we need to be able to make the people who felt differently than us feel um, feel okay. And we need to bring the country together. I think all of us on this panel have lost friends on Facebook, people that we've known for decades, um, and then it's just boom, gone. And the people that are hugely opposed to Trump, but who have stayed friends with us on Facebook, okay, if Trump if Trump wins, we're not going to be sending them angry texts. And if Trump loses, I hope that any of those people know that we're not sitting there gloating and laughing at you for your position. I mean, we're Americans, we're in this together, and the fastest that we can pull ourselves together as a country, that is what is needed. And that's also, again, with the teachings of Christ. Um, you, you don't ever make your, your the person you have victory over, you don't make them feel small, you make them feel important, and you bring them back to the table. So hopefully, and I, I think President Trump has demonstrated that kind of leadership before. And uh, hopefully the press's voice is going to be muted somewhat by this election, because I think the people are speaking. I want to thank, uh, everybody has referenced God. I, will, I want to thank Heavenly Father for the fact that we are all so lucky to live in a country that is a country based on freedom and free enterprise and freedom of thought, and that we can pray freely and that we can vote freely and we can think freely. And this election is all about that. No matter what happens, we're Americans first, and we stand up to people that would put us down, no matter who they are. Um, so I'm just, I'm so grateful for all of you guys. And tomorrow's going to be oh, one heck of a day. Yes. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you all. My God, I love you all also. It's so great. I'm so proud of you. Listening to you guys, I don't even have to say anything. You've said it all. The only thing I would say also is pray. And then please keep America great again. Thank you. Bye. See you. Thank you. Thank Vote for you. Trump. Four more years. Four more years. Four more years. Four more years. Four more years.